in the broadest sense, there are a lot of people out there, but we're doing something very different. Uh, and, and so, uh, you know, you see people like Akamai and Limelight and others taking chunks out of each other in a highly competitive, what I call Web 1.0 CDM marketplace, where they are primarily focused on delivering um, web pages with reduced latency for their customers. <clears throat> we have a specific area that we're focused on, which is the delivery of large digital assets, which tend to be video, software, and games, which are very large files that we want to move from the content owner to the consumer. And uh, we do that in a very different way to traditional CDNs. Uh, we use some innovative different techniques which allow us to really disrupt three things. We can disrupt the economics of the marketplace. We disrupt the performance and the quality of service delivered for things like video over the web as an example. <clears throat> and we really disrupt the way that we can control those assets on behalf of the content owner. So he's got complete control over the beginning to the end of the delivery cycle for every one of those different files that we're delivering for him. You know, the CDM marketplace has been around 10 years. It's not a new market. Um, it's focused on specifically uh, improving the performance and removing latency from delivery of, of files, particularly the Web 1.0 problem, which was websites. So if you were in New York and I'm in London and you're looking at my website, each time you press a button on your browser in New York, you're sending a request for a new page to my web server in, in London and I'll respond. But the time it takes to go from New York to London and back means that that web page renders with poor performance. And so the first generation CDNs were out there to provide a global network with cache devices on that network uh, located around the globe so that if I was subscribing as a website owner to their service, next time you're in New York looking at my website, it's being served from a local cached copy of the site in New York versus London, which means you get a better performance, which removes latency from, uh, from the delivery of the web page. We do something very different with things like video um, latency is not the issue. Whether it takes 0.3 of a second or 0.5 of a second for a video to start doesn't matter too much. What really matters is if that's a 60-minute or 120-minute movie that you're watching in high quality, that be from the beginning to the end of the movie delivery, you're getting a high-quality broadcast experience. And that's a different problem space that we solve with a different sort of technology. So with traditional CDNs, you'll have what I call... Uh, single source caching, it will create a connection between the cache and you as the, requ the requester on your browser for the file, the web page, to be delivered to, your, to you on, on, your, on your PC. Um, the challenge is that if that was, the, that may be the right, the right cache to choose at the beginning of a file delivery, but if that file is several hundred megabytes in size or several gigabytes in size if it's a movie, then what was the right cache to choose at the beginning of the file delivery may be the wrong cache to have chosen 30 minutes later, an hour later, an hour and a half later, because it's still delivering that file for you to watch or download to watch later for the entire duration of that movie, which is a huge file in several gigabytes in size. And so we have some different technology inside our network. So we have a global network, we have caches, um, but we use some fundamentally different techniques, which are all focused on quality of service. So we have what we call multi-sourced cache delivery, which means we take the file, the video file, for instance, we break it into slices, and we put those slices on many caches, and we'll dynamically deliver from multiple caches at the same time. So if one cache starts going slow, we'll deliver more from another cache somewhere else on the network or multiple other caches. So we're dynamically making those decisions in real time to guarantee the bit rate to the consumer's browser. And by guaranteeing the bit rate, we're giving them broadcast quality experience. So it is a caching network. It is, it is however fundamentally solving a different problem. The Web 3.0 problem of multimedia and large files is different to the Web 1.0 problem, which is a commoditizing marketplace for the delivery of web pages. And peer-to-peer -peer can work into the scenario that you do, or yeah. how does that fit in? Yeah, it, it, and it can. So, so, <clears throat> so a couple of things that we really need to, to solve if we're going to deliver uh, broadcast quality media over the web. What, one is quality of service, which we just talked about. The second is sort of the economics. So how do, how do we make it cheaper to deliver over the web and enable new business models than to stamp a DVD and put it in the post? And at the moment, it's a toss of which one of those is the more viable alternative. We want to change the economics so that online is by far and away the best solution for content owners, broadcasters, and movie studios. So one of the things we can use is peer-to-peer is -peer within our network. So we can turn it on as an option, which allows you to try and to, to really begin to change the economics. So 
within our network, if you're a consumer looking at, a, let's say, a video, then um, what will happen is if we've got peer-to-peer -peer turned on, it will go off and try and figure out which other people have looked at that file, watched that file before, and pull it from those other peers on that peer-to-peer -peer network. If it turns out that it's popular, more will come from the peers and less from the cache. If it turns out the file is unpopular, or it's a new file that's just gone live and it's not been shared before, then more of the traffic coming to you as a consumer will come from the cache and less from the peers. So we're really blending together traffic coming from caches and peers, so we'll continue to guarantee the bit rate to the consumer and therefore the quality of service to your browser, which is really important. Peer-to-peer -peer on its own, without the backup of a caching network as an example, uh, can't guarantee a quality of service because on its own as a technology, if a file is popular, there are many people to share with and you'll get good performance and good quality. If there are, if there are very few people to share with, you'll get less quality and less bandwidth and therefore a degraded service. You as a consumer never know what you're going to get, right? You, you know, sometimes it'll be good, sometimes it'll be bad. You never quite know what's going to happen and you shouldn't need to know. Now, maybe that was what people expected when you were using peer-to-peer -peer for illegal file sharing. But in the legitimate world, working with major broadcasters and content owners, you need an SLA and a quality of service stamp behind your service. And so what we do is we take some of the best techniques behind peer-to-peer -to, -peer to drive down the cost of delivery and we blend it with cash delivery and it's multi-sourcing so that you've got a complete solution that guarantees quality of service and reduces cost.